Welcome to another edition of the Backyard Professor Podcast Series, where I get to do all the talking, and you get to do all the listening and the learning. It's July 20th, 2007. I'm Kerry Schertz, the Backyard Professor. It's awful smoky up here in my Rocky Mountains here in Idaho. It's fire season, and there's way too many fires, man. It's pretty nasty up here. Uh, kind of hard to see the beauty in nature when the beauty of nature is burning, but uh, we got to be careful with the fires, that's for sure. I've been receiving for this last couple of weeks several very excellent comments, both pro and con, negative and positive, on this particular series of podcasts I'm doing on the Trinity. And I want to say thank you to all of you who are discussing them and showing me where you stand, where you agree with me, where you disagree with me. It's good to get a discussion going. I can't always be right. I can't always be wrong. So it's good to find where our weaknesses are and where our strengths are. And I want to especially say thank you to C.K. Salmon, who has questioned my use of uh, Norman Geisler's The Significance of Christ's Physical Resurrection. Let me read as a quote specifically what Geisler says, and then I will share Joseph Smith's idea also. I think I did make it a little bit too confusing in my first podcast. So thank you for your sharp ear and sharp eyes, C.K. Salmon. I appreciate it. On page 149, here is where I was quoting Geisler, and I quote now. In addition to the physical nature of the resurrection body, that is, of Jesus Christ, evangelicals have also affirmed its immortal and imperishable dimension, 1 Corinthians 15, 42 and 43. It is a glorified and heavenly body, Philippians 3.21 and 1 John 3 and 2. That is, it is one specifically suited for abode in heaven where perishable flesh and blood cannot enter, 1 Corinthians 15.50. Jesus, as the first fruits of the resurrection, 1 Corinthians 15.20, was the first one to have a permanent, imperishable, glorified resurrection body. However, while his resurrection body is more than mortal, it is not less than physical. What is unique about the resurrection body is not a lack of materiality, but the presence of imperishability. 1 Corinthians 15.42 Christ was not the first to be raised in a physical body, but he was the first to be raised in an immortal physical body. And the idea I pronounced, that's the end of the quote there, the idea I said is that Norman Geisler's use of the body as being in heaven and where perishable flesh and blood cannot enter, and he quotes 1 Corinthians 15.50, Geisler does. I was saying Joseph Smith also taught this. Joseph Smith taught that it is not flesh and blood that enters heaven, just like the scripture teaches, but it is flesh and bone. Geisler agrees Jesus' immortal, imperishable, physical body of flesh and bone is in heaven. I said Joseph Smith's teaching is that the resurrection body does not possess blood, but it possesses spirit, the imperishable element. Blood is the mortal element. Geisler didn't say that. I did. And so, that's what I wanted to clarify, is that it, it made it sound like Geisler was also teaching what Joseph Smith was teaching, but that's not what he was saying. But he did say on page 153, and I want to quote this, The word spiritual denotes a body that is immortal, not immaterial. A spiritual body is one dominated by the spirit, not one devoid of matter. The Greek word soma pneumatikos, translated spiritual body here, means a body directed by the spirit as opposed to one under the dominion of the flesh. 
It is a supernatural body, because it is not ruled by flesh that perishes, but by the spirit that endures. And this is why I I say, Norman Geisler, Joseph Smith scooped you. Because Joseph Smith taught way back in the 1830s and 40s that the supernatural body is under dominion of the spirit, just like Geisler says. He says, quote, because it is not ruled by flesh that perishes, but by the spirit that endures. That's how Geisler put it. The way Joseph Smith put it is, he said, there is not blood in the resurrection body. Spirit courses through the veins of the resurrection body, not blood. So I hope that clarifies that confusion. Geisler did not teach that, but he is saying the invisible. He's saying the spiritual body. I'm sorry. Page 153. So, spiritual body does not denote what is immaterial and invisible, but what is immortal and imperishable because it is controlled by the spirit. That's how Norman Geisler put it. Joseph Smith taught the reason that it is controlled by the Spirit is because it is suffused by the Spirit. It's not blood, but Spirit that is in the resurrection body. I hope that clarifies that. Thank you for your excellent comment, C.K. Salmon. Thank you for everyone else who is also commenting on these Trinity podcasts. I just wanted to clarify that. I think C.K. Salmon had a good point. And I appreciate you asking me to clarify that. I'm not trying to misread Geisler. I'm trying to show that what Geisler is teaching is LDS doctrine. Not that LDS doctrine came first. Of course not. But LDS doctrine is not necessarily based just upon the biblical record either. It is also based on Revelation today, right now as we have it. So this is also very interesting to... uh, Keep this in mind, the basis of LDS doctrine is not a book, but it is a living being, namely God, who we say continues to teach us today. So I just want to open that up and clarify that. Now, in in my pursuit of trying to comprehend why we Mormons are excluded from being Christians... I've been rereading what I believe is one of the pinnacle texts, one of the most important books. And I say this really truly for both LDS readers and non-LDS readers. If you haven't got it, you really ought to try to get it. Horizon Books recently republished this book. It's called The Mormon Doctrine of Deity by B.H. Roberts, one of the great intellects in the early church, I'm trying to find the uh, the date it was printed. Oh, I don't see it. It's a reprint of his classic argument with Reverend Vanderdonk by Horizon. Let me see if I can get this. I have so many notes stapled in this thing. I really don't see what year Horizon republished it. 